Hi, it's Brian. This is the Awards Contender, and today I'm very excited to bring you my review of one of my favorite films I saw at the Telluride Film Festival earlier this month, The Holdovers, from director Alexander Payne, starring Paul Giamatti. Of the 13 films I saw at Telluride, this one's definitely in the top five. I had a great time with this movie. It was a return to form for Alexander Payne for sure. I mean, his first movie, Citizen Ruth, I like, but his second feature, Election, from 99, is one of my favorite movies, honestly. It's probably in my top 30 or 40 films ever. I would say I watch Election every couple years, and it always delights me from beginning to end. That phenomenal cast, that sharp writing, everything about Election is so wonderful. And then just one after another, he kept releasing amazing films about Schmidt from 2002, Sideways from 2004. I mean, I would say I love Sideways even more today than I did back in 2004, because I definitely have more experience in wine. And I just love movies about writers. I think Sideways is one of the very best films ever made about a writer. I still think one of the most egregious acting Oscar snubs of the 2000s is Paul Giamatti for Sideways. He shouldn't have just been nominated at the Oscars for that performance. Like, he should have been close to a win. Like, it should have been between Paul Giamatti and Jamie Foxx for the win. It still just irks me that Giamatti did not get in for that. But here's hoping almost 20 years later that gets rectified in a few months when Paul Giamatti hopefully gets into the Best Actor Oscar race for The Holdovers, which reunites him with Alexander Payne. I mean, I did much like the director's last film, Downsizing, which came out way back in 2017. So it's been a while, definitely a long time since Payne's last great movie, a full decade, Nebraska from 2013 starring Bruce Dern and Will Forte, and The Descendants from 2011 starring George Clooney and Shailene Woodley. So despite a small misstep with Downsizing, which is an interesting film, it's not a bad movie, it's got some really good performances in it, especially from Hong Chow, who almost got an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Like, for the most part, we can count on Alexander Payne to deliver a great film, and I knew based on the trailer I had seen, the story, the cast, I already knew before I walked into that Telluride screening. Like, The Holdovers, at worst, was going to just be a good movie. <laughs> like, if The Holdovers had been some massive disappointment, that would have really shocked me. I just don't think Alexander Payne is capable of making a terrible movie. And when he's focused on a narrative that is completely character-driven, that's about relationships, that's about the growth of characters who have some issues, but through one another, they find a way forward. I mean, the three main characters in The Holdovers are so clearly defined from the opening few scenes. Like, I knew within about five minutes of this movie, I was going to be in for a masterpiece. This is one of Alexander Payne's very best films. It's my favorite he's made since Sideways. So part of me thinks Alexander Payne should just reunite with Paul Giamatti all the time. Like it should be the new DiCaprio-Scorsese relationship. Let's just have these guys make a new movie every two years until the end of time. Does that sound like a plan? Paul Giamatti is an excellent actor. He's really good in a lot of different things, in film and TV. But Alexander Payne really knows how to use him, how to cast him in just the right roles. I cannot imagine anyone but Paul Giamatti playing this teacher in The Holdovers. He is a teacher very few students like. He gives D's and F's all over the place. He is perfectly happy, like the day before winter vacation starts, to dig into a new chapter in the textbook when everyone's already checked out when most of the other teachers have canceled classes until January. Like, he's still like, okay, everyone get out your books, and let's start with chapter six. And it's like, these students are like, what? <laughs> like, are you serious? He is a middle-aged man who really has no friends. He has not been in a relationship with a woman for many decades. And basically, this job, this institution, is his life. The Holdovers takes place in the Northeast in 1970, 
Giamatti is a teacher at this like prep school for college. He's mostly working with students like 15 to 18 years old. And Giamatti's character, also named Paul, is one of the few people on campus who don't go anywhere for winter vacation. Whereas most of the teachers and students are long gone for a couple weeks, he remains there. And it's why most years, Paul is put in charge of the holdovers, those select few kids who have nowhere to go for winter vacation. So Paul is in charge of watching them over the break, giving them daily activities, some schoolwork, some free time, even though all Paul wants to do is nothing, is just like chill at home and not even think about kids for the next two weeks. I mean, it's not just the students who don't like him, the faculty don't really care for him either, and that's why Paul is typically given this task. And basically like the one adult on campus he can converse with, who he enjoys the company of, is the campus chef Mary, played by Divine Joy Randolph, she has been suffering with intense grief as of late. Her husband died. Her son has tragically died. She is all alone. She doesn't really know what to do with herself anymore. Her son was the center of her life. And now that he's gone, she's just basically going through the motions. And she gets a little bit of joy in talking to Paul. I mean, it seems like an unlikely friendship, but they have more in common than they realize. And Randolph in this movie is extraordinary. I think she's mostly known for comedy. I don't know how many dramatic roles she has done before the holdovers, but she has a couple moments in this movie that just tear your heart out. This moment in a kitchen where she just starts crying. I have not forgotten that moment since I saw it at Telluride. She has some beautiful scenes in this movie. I think Randolph will get into the Best Supporting Actress category at the Oscars. She is that good in this. So Paul and Mary spend some time together when Paul is not busy with those students he has to oversee. For a few minutes, I would say like 10 to 15 minutes of the movie, he has to oversee about six kids. It's like five or six kids. But then most of them end up leaving campus on a helicopter with the parents of one of the kids. The only one who doesn't go is Angus, played by Dominic Sessa. Angus has had a rough few months. He doesn't have a lot of friends on campus, and he can barely get through to his mom. He was expecting to spend the holidays with her, but his mom has a new boyfriend, and she and the boyfriend just want to spend the holidays by themselves. So in a phone call, his mom's like, yeah, just stay put on campus. We'll come see you next year sometime. I don't want you to come home. And so Angus is obviously frustrated. And then when they can't get a hold of the mom for him to go with the other kids on this helicopter, it's just Paul, Mary, and Angus basically on this entire campus for a few days. And so the majority of the movie is spending time with these three characters. We learn a lot about them as the movie progresses. Some of it's funny, some of it's sad, some of it's surprising. I mean, Paul is so cantankerous and guarded in those first 30 to 40 minutes. It doesn't feel like anybody will be able to get through to him outside of like Mary maybe. But Paul and Angus over a few days of winter break do come to appreciate the other, learn things about each other. They're spending so much time in close quarters that it's going to be really hard to not have a deep felt conversation. Paul turns out to be not quite as selfish as we think he is in the movie's first act. He is much more complex of a person than we might think in those opening few scenes it kind of takes Angus to bring the humanity out of Paul. And so basically, I just loved everything about the holdovers. I loved its sense of place. I loved the time period, like 1970, Northeastern, wintry, academic setting. I'm in. <laughs> like, I love everything about the feel, the look of this place, of the time period. And then you put the character of Paul in this setting, and that's where the laughs come from. The Holdovers is the funniest film I watched at Telluride by a mile. I mean, I want to say there's at least 15 to 20 huge laughs in this movie. This is a very sad film at times. It is more of a drama, I guess you would say, than a comedy. But it's Alexander Payne. It can be very funny, too. And there are some situations, some moments that will have you smiling, if not laughing, hysterically. 
The humor always comes from the characters, nothing is ever forced, and the same thing goes for the pacing of the holdovers. It's not forced. It's leisurely, to be sure. There were like a couple moments in the film I was like, okay, this is a little too slow. Like we could go a little faster than this. I would say I only felt that in the opening 30 minutes maybe. I mean, once you really come to know and love these characters, I was in a place at the end of the movie where I was like, this could go on for another hour and I would be happy. I just loved spending time with these people, especially as we learned more about them and about their past. The writing is sharp, the direction is pitch perfect, these performances are so beautiful and nuanced. Again, Paul Giamatti is one of our great actors. It's kind of crazy to think he's only been nominated for one Academy Award, and that's Cinderella Man. He's of course been great in so many other things since. I love his turn in Win Win from 2011. That is an excellent Giamatti performance, but I don't think he has been this strong, this memorable in a film since Sideways 19 years ago. His performance in The Holdovers is one of the very best I have seen in 2023. It scares me to think he could miss out on a Best Actor Oscar nomination like he did for Sideways, but I just feel like The Holdovers is going to be a movie the Academy embraces. I think they are going to go nuts for this movie. I could see the holdovers getting into Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor for Paul Giamatti, Best Supporting Actress for Divine Joy Randolph. Again, I think she is just superb in this movie. I even think Best Supporting Actor could be on the table, if not at the Oscars, like somewhere throughout award season for Dominic Sessa as Angus. He is one of the great finds of the last few years. In the Telluride Q&A, Alexander Payne talked about how this was the first movie Dominic Sessa has ever been in. I believe he said it's the first film that Sessa ever even auditioned for. Payne had been looking at actors for this role who were a bit more well known and he just wasn't finding what he wanted for the role. And so he started looking at Northeastern drama schools for someone of the right age to play this character. And that's where he came across Dominic Sessa. This is a brilliant performance from a young actor. Dominic Sessa gets to show a range of dramatic shades in this role, and he is up to the task. Working with incredible talents like Divine Joy Randolph and Paul Giamatti, he does not blink. He is sensational in this, one of the best debut performances in a movie of the last 10 years easily. And it's just wonderful. The Holdovers is absolutely wonderful. If you're a fan of the work of Alexander Payne, if you love Paul Giamatti, like you are going to adore this movie the way I did. I think Alexander Payne is one of our great filmmakers. I always look forward to his next project. Again, I think this is his best film since Sideways, and it's going to get lots of Oscar nominations. It's an amazing story about a teacher, about friendship, about grief and loss, about the Christmas season. This is a Christmas movie for sure. I don't know how many like Christmas films we're getting in 2023, but The Holdovers also qualifies as that too. We have a new modern Christmas movie classic in The Holdovers. I can't wait to own this movie like I own Election and Sideways behind me. The Holdovers is easily one of the top 10 films of 2023. It's funny, it's emotional, it's everything you want in a great movie. I give The Holdovers a 9.5 out of 10. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned in the coming days for more reviews from the Telluride Film Festival, including Rustin, Anatomy of a Fall, and The Zone of Interest. We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.